day before yesterday, this came, the Starlink pipe adapter. Right now my Starlink is just using the little base station, let it rest on the ground while I was trying to figure out where to mount it, how to mount it, etc. Looking into various mounting options for my situation, I decided that this pipe adapter would be the most efficient way for me to mount it. So what came in the box was some very, again, well, much like the machine itself, the base kit itself, the Starlink unit. Directions are kind of simple. We got this adapter here that goes from all kinds of size pipes to the Starlink. A little wrench so we can tie everything together. Then there's three of these holes. Two, three. Well, three sets of two. And it, so it came with two different size pieces of all thread. I'm assuming if you have a big pipe, you would use the shorter screws. If you have a smaller pipe, you'd use the bigger screws. And then you just tighten them up and get them centered. It also came with a box full of these guys, which I'm assuming is for me to be able to run the cable and through these, tighten it up however I want. Kind of a neat little thing. I didn't know that was coming. Those might come in handy to make things dressed out pretty. My goal is to get a ladder and go up to my communication pole and mount the Starlink to the top of that pole. And then I'll do the same thing I did for the others. I'll just run the cable down and then into the building, leaving a drip loop so that no water goes inside. And then we won't have to have our cable running through a window. So let's get the sucker installed and see how it works. And as they say, no plan survives the first contact with the enemy. Starlink not my enemy, but nothing around here ever goes easy. Got the pipe adapter on. Now you'll notice the diameter of the pipe at the top is the same diameter as the pipe down here but what i don't have is this little clippy button to be able to do the release so the pipe adapter allows me to do that i don't know if they sell a smaller pipe adapter but this is the one that i saw stores are a little limited right now i'm sure because everything's new but it is working well it's up here, it's connected. Some of the issues I ran into were just learning. One, my pipe. I didn't like how sturdy or lack thereof my pipe was. So mainly it was this joint right here. This top one wiggled because I didn't have it secured to the bottom and it was never an issue because all I ever had was these really light unidirectional antennas up here. Um, so I drilled a hole. There was a hole in the bottom one, no hole in the top one. Took it all down, drilled a hole through the top, drilled a hole through the bottom, got this piece of all thread here. I'm gonna, now that it's up here and it's secure, I'll lop this off. It'll cut off wheel. But this pipe, this hose, hose, this cable for Starlink needs to go inside inside this pipe and then up so it's kind of hidden. I guess that keeps critters from eating it. I don't know. So <laughs> what do you know? The adapter for Starlink doesn't fit through the pipe with this bolt in there. Okay, well, take that bolt back out. Then, the joint on the, the bolt on the window wall mount here, cable also doesn't fit through this bolt. Take that bolt out. So, what I thought was going to be a short and easy install was a couple hours of taking stuff down, finding the right parts, putting it back up. Now, we'll seal up this hole with some silicone like we did the other ones. One is for my cell phone booster. 
just so I have connectivity inside my cabin. These two were for a little cellular router I have. You want to do MIMO, so two cables, two antennas. So now I got four cables out here. They all come down, have a little drip loop so that uh, no water falls back into the silicone. Fix the silicone, use some of those cables that the, or those attachments they gave us. I'll secure this down. We'll put our drip loop down here so we'll attach, we'll attach that cable kind of like that. Just run it right across the top of this vent. Maybe, maybe someday we don't ever come back on this side of the cabin except for mowing. Maybe I put a paint this white for that small section. Maybe we leave it be. I don't know. Whenever I deal with this bolt, I'll deal with this wire. But let's go get the inside plugged in so we can turn Starlink on and make sure we have connectivity before we put all the little finishing touches on. Well, it's booting back up. It moved to be perfectly flat looking up into the sky. When I had it in the temporary location, it always pointed that general direction. I mean, it never really moved. That would be north. So even though there's a couple trees right here, it is a completely open view of the sky to the north. I might, just for giggles, limb up that one little tree branch there just to keep it out of Starlink's possible field of view, but I do believe once it orients itself, it's going to go from flat to pointing back the north the way it's always been pointing. Now what I don't know is, does it also rotate horizontally? Or does it only tilt itself up and down? Because uh, when I drilled that hole, I did not take that into account because the hole goes one direction and I cannot rotate the top and bottom pipe. Now I guess I could rotate the pipe adapter, loosen up those six hex bolts or little all threads they have there and rotate it. That would work. If it complains, then we'll deal with it. Let's see what the app is doing. The app says it's online. One device connected, probably my phone. And I can look at visibility, and just like the first time, it says that Starlink is trying to look for obstructions, it's going to take it 12 hours, blah blah blah. And that's exactly what happened the first time. I'm not going to get my phone up there and check. Statistics. Hey, look, we had an outage. Yeah, because I was moving everything around. So, that's where we're at at the moment. Typically, we're latency where it says uh, 35 milliseconds. Typically, I've been seeing about 35 to 45 whenever I check. I've seen it as high as 60. Um, you see up there it says it's been as high as 140. I haven't seen that in my testing, but it, it does uh, more tracking than I do. I check whenever I get curious. Let's see what a speed test is after we moved it to the top of the house before it finalizes its orientation. I do like how they do this test because one is, it really confused me the first time, one is from my phone to the internet. The second test will be from uh, the router to the internet. And then the third test will be from my phone to the router. So it kind of breaks it out into three points so you can see if you have a problem where it lies. Now my guess is the way it's not doing anything, I can't do a speed test until it finalizes its orientation. Yeah, those are crappy speeds. I've been seeing about 100 to 115 on average whenever I check. A little better. But I do know I just moved it. 
and it is not pointing the way it typically points. Yeah, that's crappy speeds, but I've been getting on my phone and on my laptop, I've been getting about 100 to 115 down, and I've been getting about 10 to 15 up. So the uploads definitely are not as strong as the downloads. It's starting to move and point in a different direction. So it's got a little bit of a tilt to it. And it did rotate to make it safe self point straight north. This building right here, this cabin is essentially perfectly east west. So as we're standing here, that is east. So that is perfectly north to the left if I turn 90 degrees left, which is essentially where that sucker's pointing. Maybe that plane up there is why I'm getting bad speeds. I'll bet you it's a bad signal. We'll try again from inside. Hence why my point, three tests, my phone was terrible. The router did much better. And then my phone to the router was bad. So we can look at these three tests and say, hmm, must be something on my phone because phone is terrible to the internet. Phone is terrible to the router. But the router itself is getting, albeit half what I normally get, connection to the internet. I'll bet you it's the radiant barrier I have. But it is working. That pole is very solid. It doesn't wiggle. So I think I'm going to go cock up that hole that I drilled in the wall to get the building in. Put a couple of those clips that they included, these little guys here. To help hold that cable in place, I can probably use three to make it look pretty. And then we can go clean up some wiring on the inside and we'll do another speed test from inside a little bit later. So let's button it up and let Mr. Starlink get happy.